Okay, welcome to day 76. If this is your first time here, my name is Andrew Loren, and this is a series I'm doing where I'm documenting my everyday art process and my growth as an artist over time. So right now we're in the middle of what we are calling Anatomy Month, uh, which means we're spending the entire month of January kind of breaking down the anatomy of the figure and trying to understand it on a deeper level. So I've actually studied anatomy a couple times in the past, um, but this is the first time I'm really kind of like taking it seriously, devoting some serious time to it each week, uh, and really trying to level up my, my figure drawing skills. And if you don't know why you should study anatomy as an artist, I covered this in a few videos, maybe like two or three, sometime last week, let's say, around, around 70, 65, video 70, 60, 70 or 65. Um, but the short of it is that it will make you a better artist. If you want to draw representationally, if you want to draw figure drawing well, uh, studying anatomy 100% without a doubt will make you a better figure artist. Um, this has been known by artists since the Renaissance and will continue to be true into infinity. Um, so this week, we're actually beginning with the, so the first week we focused on the front of the torso, the second week the back, and now we're going into the legs and the pelvis. Um, and when I went to study the legs and the pelvis in these past couple days, um, I was confronted with some new emotions with studying anatomy that I haven't felt in a long time. So while I had a decent understanding or kind of like a memory of the front of the torso muscles and the back muscles, um, I actually remembered almost nothing about the leg. In fact, I, I, it must be three or four years now since I really looked at the anatomy of the leg. And for the first time I was like, oh wow, a bit overwhelmed by the amount of uh, anatomy that there is. And so that kind of got me to reconnect a little bit with the emotions that some of my audience is uh, experiencing. So I actually, I did a poll on Instagram a little while ago about how many members of the audience, how many of you all that I'm talking to right now, um, actually study anatomy. And it was actually a pretty big percentage. I think everybody who answered, answered yes, but only like a handful of people answered though. So it's, it's a little bit hard to tell. Um, but if you are not studying anatomy in one part because you're overwhelmed, I feel like from this experience I can re-empathize with that and understand that a little bit. Um, and maybe offer some advice in, the, in like how, it, how you should go about studying. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing is the best way to study anatomy or really anything in my opinion is this idea of like breaking it down into smaller parts. So just in general, instead of studying the whole body anatomy, we in this series have broken it down into four different pieces that we're studying over each week. And the reality is you can always break down pieces individually within there. So the first thing that I did to break down the anatomy of the leg is, okay, I wanna understand it very simply from a front view, from a side view, and from the rear view. Without any, dyna like any dynamic motion, just a standing leg, simple, straight, in its structure as it should be, and just understand it in those three different pieces. And this is what I decided to do today, <clears throat> was to just study the anatomy of these from anatomy diagrams. Um, so we're again using the textbook from Valerie Wilson that you can find in the, in the description below. Um, but this is just to give the baseline. And you could even really, if you wanted to, break this down even further. So I, I did do some research just looking around at, at, at uh, people on the internet, folks on the internet like Proko who have like put, put out anatomy videos. Um, and some people break down like the upper part of the leg and the lower part of the leg, the front of the leg, the back of the leg. And you could continue to take this approach and just always kind of break it down into a smaller, more manageable piece or something that you're willing to study and like feel ready to study. For me, the way to break it down was to think about it in these three different views, the front, the side, and the rear. And what I did is, if you see in the time lapse that's going beside me, is I also spent, I didn't spend so much time labeling each individual muscle, um, because I think that's kind of like a place where you can get a little bit overwhelmed, and I don't know how important it is. There's so many individual little muscles, for example, in the lower part of the leg that I'm not yet sure how relevant it is or like how much brain power needs to be wasted on those or spent on those at this moment. Um, but instead, what I tried to do is like identify those large muscle groups and then identify them in each of the three views that I drew. Um, and this gave me like a really nice understanding of, for example, like, you know, this long muscle that goes down the side, like starts up by the hip and goes all the way down the side of the leg and down through, and there's even a, a rhythm that goes down through the knee and all the way to the bottom of the foot. Um, 
and and these are to me are like the kinds of things that I really want to try and like extract out of out of this uh, out of the study is like really trying to understand like what are these like bigger shapes or bigger bigger groups of muscles. Um, so you know, like kind of looking at the thigh muscle as like one group, the front of the leg is one group, the back of the upper leg is one group, and then just the lower leg is another. Um, is a little bit about my my thought process with these. Um, the other thing that I did is I did spend a little bit of time studying the bone structure. And if you notice in each of these drawings, I start first with the bone structure and then build my way up. And the reason is um, this idea of like bony landmarks, which we've talked about a little bit in the past. And, and uh, if you follow Proko, if you follow Jeff Watts or anything like that, um, you're probably familiar with these ideas of the bony landmarks. But the idea here is that these are like uh, elements of the skeletal structure that you can sometimes see on that you can see on many people and you can kind of use them as a landmark and so I wanted to understand what those were in the leg and I have a few that I can mention now but you might also identify some more in your in your studying but so on the side of the leg there's kind of the like let's call it the hip bone there's like that bony landmark that kind of protrudes then you have the kneecap the patella that bony landmark on the knee um, and then you also have the two around the ankles. So you have like on either side of the ankle, uh, there's the, the bone that kind of sticks out of the foot. Um, and so I was kind of trying to capture these and try and understand some of these. And just, you, you can even see just by the way I'm talking about this now, just start to internalize and study some of this information about the anatomy of the leg. And then as we continue to practice this week, we'll get to put some of this into, like, into motion and get to test ourselves a little bit and slowly, slowly grow our knowledge. But the objective was for today was just three different drawings, a front view, a side view, and a rear view of a single leg, starting with the skeletal structure, building the anatomy up, and just kind of trying to understand what are the big shapes here um, and how should these things fit together. I should also mention in my study, I don't just do this drawing. I also did spend some time reading the text that's linked in the description below, the Valerie Wilson, uh, Winslow, excuse me, Valerie Winslow um, textbook. I also watched a few Proko videos. I also found just some, you know, random videos on YouTube um, of people talking about the anatomy of the leg and different aspects about it, just to try and kind of, you know, familiarize myself with the, the language, you know, maybe hear a little bit more about the names of bones and the names of muscles and just slowly start to build up piece by piece this little bit of knowledge base. Um, and so I think that's a, a nice introduction into this week, into this idea of like how to not be overwhelmed by when studying anatomy. Um, and I will now kind of do a little bit of a voiceover on the time-lapse.